Now, but yeah, so what got you into music? What was like, was there a drive, a passion that was when you were young or? Yeah, I've always just wanted to play music. It's not like a well thought out thing on my part at all. It's just, uh, yeah, when I was, uh, I was, I was always wanted to be around it when I was really young. Like my mom used to listen to a lot of music in like the car at home and stuff. And I always wanted to, I don't know, really odd stuff. Like when I was four or five, I was really into Elvis Costello. But my mom used to, you know, used to play his music a lot. So mm -hmm. I used to, used to sing along to like watching the detectives <laughs> when I was four. And then ELO, like Mr. Blue Sky mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So music's always been there. And my dad played and we used to have parties. And being Irish, you know, we yeah. play, yeah, if a party happens, a guitar comes out and everything. And my dad would always play. And I was always just really impressed by it. Like how he could sort of, sort of command a room with it. Not that that made me want to perform, it just made me want to be around it. Yeah. And then as, as, as I got a little bit older, I just sort of started picking up instruments and then one day I decided I'd quite like to sing and then I decided I'd quite like to try and write. So, um, I don't know, it's very simplistic it, it's in my mind. I've always just sort of wanted to be around it, so I've always just pursued it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And finally got into you and you started writing and you know, kind of giving it out there to the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah, again, it was a very so slow, sort of unspectacular process. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of nights sitting in front of the piano, like just playing notes and trying <laughs> to sing. And, like, I didn't sing when I was young. No. Like, when I was a kid, I didn't sing at all. Like, yeah, I sang in, in, in a choir when I was, started secondary school, so I was like 12, 13. <laughs> but I kind of had quite a bit of uncontrolled voice, so <laughs> they didn't really know what to do with me. And that was that's quite a weird thing for, for especially for a guy when you, you sort of sing quite high and then they put you in with the girls to sing oh. and as a 13 year old it's not like, the place no. you want to be you want to so you purposely make your voice low to try and get to go and sing with the sort of tenors of the baritone so um so i didn't really sing or do any of that stuff until i was maybe 18 19 and i thought about it but okay i'm going to try this but again just quietly went about my business and just tried to learn the fundamentals and stuff Fundamentals of how to write, the fundamentals of how what melody is, and how it works, and how other people do it. I think it's important to, to learn the basics before you try it yourself. No, definitely. Yeah. Because you really get foundation for sure. Yeah, the foundation is really was really important to me to mm -hmm. have something, and I, and it was also sort of driven into me by my parents. My mom would always said, especially when it came to music, when I decided that I wanted to, to make music. She was supportive, but at the same time, she was very much like, if you do it, you need to actually do it, rather than just picking up the guitar, writing a few songs, and calling yourself a musician. I think she kind of instilled in me this sort of will to, to, to learn it the right way from the ground up.
writing process? How is that for you? Is that, do you have a favorite part about the creative writing process? Or is the it end. <laughs> <laughs> um, How come? Oh, because I can sleep again for a few days. Yeah, I understand how it works now, and I understand how to make it work for me, but initially it was quite an unknown thing. It still is, I guess, but it's uh, you sort of, like what I mean is that once I start writing something, I know pretty quickly whether it's worth pursuing or not. And uh, if it is, I will pursue it, and I'll just keep working on it and chipping away at it, even if it becomes sort of mentally um, quite um, torturous. <laughs> Or I'll know that it's not worth pursuing and I'll just move on to something else. So it's sort of, um, you understand how it works, but it doesn't become faster or it doesn't, it doesn't suddenly, you can't skip the steps. They're still all there. <laughs> so um, that's why it took me a little bit, as long as it did to make the records. Like six months is a long time to make an album. But that's because I was writing as I was recording. So you're just kind of putting together all these different parts and in really slow. I don't work fast. I, I, I like to sort of, you know, I think it's I'm quite envious of people that can sort of pick up a guitar and write a song in a day or in an hour or a minute. You know what I mean? You see, you see these people, like, all these, like, examples. Like, you know, I remember reading articles about Ryan Adams and stuff, and he'd write, like, he'd write a set before he went on stage. He'd write, like, 10 songs, and you're just like, that's. No, I haven't heard these songs. Maybe they weren't worthy of, of being written or not. I have no idea. But, like, you know, based on history, the man's gifted song I so I imagine that like he did pretty good. So um, so I was quite envious of that. Kinda of like why wow, that'd be amazing. Yeah. To be able to just like sit down and write a song and it'd be worthy of people listening to it. But um, just for me personally it's just it takes a while to write something that I feel is worthy of people's time. Well once again after when you're done with it though it's I feel it's, yeah you're relieved and it's honestly it's something that you're proud to put up. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, tell me more about how you recorded the, the album, because I know you put yourself in isolation and totally, you know, recorded, wrote it by yourself in like in the woods or by the sea. So. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of by the woods and the sea, <laughs> between the woods and the sea. <laughs> that is, it was technically. Yeah. So how come in isolation? Because I couldn't make a record with other people. <laughs> to be honest, um, I tried and it didn't work. I tried to make a record in, in London with my, one of my best friends in the world, who's also one of the best engineers in the world. <laughs> and um, we, after about three weeks, we had nothing really. Like, I didn't have, I didn't have these songs. I didn't have songs that I was going. I had any real heart for. I was kind of um, going through the motions, I guess, of what you do when you when you um, add all these things to your life, like managers and publishers and agents and things. And you kind of go, okay, now it's time to make a record. So I went and tried it the way everyone kind of thinks you should, and it didn't work. It just was sort of, um, sort of quite jarring at the time. But then when I when I went back home to Dublin, that was in London. I went back to Dublin and just thought about it. The time when I've been happiest as, as, as a person, as a musician, or whatever, was has been when I was starting. When I was just sitting there making songs by myself and layering harmonies and you know learning how to play instruments to, in order to record them, not like, you know, mm -hmm. learning to, to play the accordion so I could play the accordion, learning to play the accordion <laughs> so I could play it on a song. That really kind of simplistic energy that comes from that, I missed yeah. So I wanted to get it back. Mm -hmm. So I uh, was off the hedges. I had the equipment that I had from like those a couple of years before. It just sort of, it made sense to just sort of remove all that nonsense becomes part of your life and just see what happens and uh, yeah just work day in day out really sort of just tip away at it and see what happens here we go like that no that's great organically it's again it's amazing how that happens you know you have to kind of shut yourself up in the world and go be really introspective right yeah i mean i guess again it works it, it, it works for me it might not work for others probably not work for nine out of ten yeah. musicians to do something like that like some musicians need the the pageantry of it all but you know there's a certain sort of um, grandness to going into a studio and having a producer and an engineer and it's a, it's a great there's a legitimacy to it mm -hmm. and uh, 
for a long time I thought that was what I wanted, to have that legitimacy, to go into a studio and have a big name sitting to my left going, you should do that. Absolutely. It's so fantastic. Thank you for that. And, uh, and it works for some people. And I'm, again, I'm slightly envious of those people who go into a studio with the seeds of ideas and have someone form them with them. I just can't do it. <laughs> or I couldn't do it for this record.
goes and, and it helps early on. But then you know the records yeah. stand by themselves and that hopefully that doesn't dictate the, mm -hmm. the, the, the topic of the story after a while. It just is the initial thing that you need if you're putting out a record by yourself. You need something that people mm -hmm. pay attention to. So they can listen to the music yeah. and then hopefully that yeah. will do everything that it needs to do. Mm -hmm. Has it hit you already that you're on the line of a following? Yeah. Has it become more familiar to you? Or are you still kind of so abstract? I think there's a pretty decent level of sort of abstract to it. <laughs> as, you, as you travel more and you play more and yeah. see more and more people coming to you. So I was like, yeah. I, went, I did my first UK tour there. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> every shot every night sold out. And the record hadn't even come out yet. That's a pretty strange thing for me because uh, I'm used to sort of, you know, I put it out in Ireland and there were maybe 20 people on my first show. So I was um, just having faith in the process and saying, okay, if I keep playing and I keep plugging away, this that it will click. And it did, but it took a while. But now I've got all these people helping me. And, you know, it's brave, but it is slightly surreal. Um, going to places and people knowing who you are before you get there and not having to fight to win people over, you know, right. playing support shows and having to try and like quiet an audience down and get them. And I'm used to doing that and I love doing it, but it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's I haven't quite got my head around everything that's going on at the moment. Just trying to, trying to just work day by day and keep my, keep my down really. I think it's good to not really pay that much attention to that stuff. Just be grateful for it. Mm -hmm. And when you're on stage, what's your what's the favorite you know your favorite moment or your favorite feeling? Um, just everything in general. Just being able to sort of just, just stand on the stage and for people to listen. I think that people listen a lot to to me, mm -hmm. which is unreal, really. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of a surreal thing when people be quiet and actually listen to what you're saying. Like, okay, you're sort of, <laughs> this matters to people, I guess, or whatever I'm doing seems to matter to people in whatever sense it does. And uh, I love that. I guess it's, really, um, it's a really privileged position to be in. I think it's like, you know, I don't think it's something that you should ever take for granted, you know, getting on stage and playing for people and people paying to come and see you and paying for your records and wanting to stay around after shows and, and, and just say that they really like it and it's it's a very um, it's a very special thing so I just I like that whole process I like the whole thing just <laughs> like being able to see people's eyes as you see them it's, it's magical Victoria Park for that small world.